Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, September 19th, 2012. I'm, and all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so I advise you to check them out. Alright, so I'm going to cover eugenics as much as I'd like to cover the Middle East and all the developments going on with all the um, psyops, basically psychological operations that are taking place on the planet right now, just pitting people together. I think I'm going to just take a day to cover eugenics. So, the first article I have for you is, People who grow up in countryside twice is likely to develop Alzheimer's. People who grow up in the countryside may be more than twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's disease in old age, according to a new study. Although the cause of the trend is unclear, the scientists suggested factors like access to health care or exposure to certain substances in either the countryside or in the cities could have played a role. It actually emphasized the difference between the two groups could be down to the benefits associated with living with the cities rather than the harmful factories factors linked to the countryside. Yeah, so they say we don't really know the mechanism. Um, they keep referring to the pesticides as an unknown substance. But it goes on here, it says the complicated evidence is insufficient to prompt an exodus to the Babylon's cities. So looking through the comments there, I remember another one, this one I just noticed today, I don't think it helps that often that parents who have, uh, parents who are rather closely related, so kind of making a joke out of it, right? Because it's so great to live in the city as you get uh, uh, just as chemtrailed as those in the rural area, which probably do attribute to, uh, contribute to the Alzheimer's or um, memory de uh, degradation. Uh, because, you know, when they when you mix the fluoride, which, whether you want it or not, and you avoid it in your tap water, is going to be in the food that's prepared, and a lot of it. Or if you want to take a shower, well, what does that fluoride do to your brain? Well, it calcifies your pineal gland. It also allows your brain to absorb aluminum uh, at a much greater rate. But it works in tandem with the aerosol spraying that uh, involves barium oxides, aluminum oxides, some people actually suspect it's the drinking water. So you know where they don't fluoridate, that could be uh, uh, that could be actually contributing to it, right? So it makes absolutely no sense here. But it's the pesticides. Pesticide exposure linked to 53% increase risk for Alzheimer's disease from um, 2010. Drug companies are giving up on Alzheimer's treatment after a series of expensive failed trials. Remember, I just. Uh, covered uh, an individual in the UK that actually euthanized himself after watching a video of someone that promotes it uh, because he had uh, Alzheimer's and um, he couldn't get any treatment. Well, there is treatment. I covered this before. Marijuana compound found superior to drugs for Alzheimer's. So that's cannabis. Also, eating berries to prevent age related memory loss. But uh, see, they just want you to die off. That's what it is. Uh, they've actually admitted this that this is what it is. Um, they're allowing older patients, elderly, to just die off in order to um, uh, manage the budget. And another attack on uh, rural people is, uh, what, they're fatter, right? Especially when they attack the South. Uh, rural America fatter than urban America. City slickers are slimmer than their country counterparts, according to a new study that suggests rural obesity is a bigger problem than we realized. You know, I, I just based off observation, just simple observation, I find that hard to believe because I grew up in the city um, like half of my life at least, and I was surrounded by some fat fuckers, man, I tell you, dude, just just asses hanging to the ground, especially women, big fat women, and, um, and of course the men. But not just that, I'm talking about also the young people too that play on their iPods and play video games all day, uh, whereas in rural areas... Uh, they tend to be what? Slimmer, right? Because they may be working on the farm fields. Well, it's too bad recently that the government actually made it illegal for uh, young people to work on the farms like they have been for hundreds of years. So maybe that'll help with the obesity problem. Higher incidence of bulimia compared to anorexia in urbanized areas. Association between degree of urbanization and the number of mental disorders is well established, including schizophrenia, psychosis, and depression are known to occur more frequently in towns and cities. In 1995, it was first reported that bulimia nervosa is associated with urban life. This study extends the research by adding data collected a decade later. So yeah, they're bashing uh, rural people for being uh, heavier, uh, where in the, in the cities, they find that, um, although I, like I said, just from observing a lot of fat people, obese people in the cities, 
that uh, what you see more bulimic anorexic people in the city is more people with anxiety problems because they're having to whiz around and stuck in uh, gridlock and that that's uh, basically road rage then you have MRI machines go supersized for chubbier United States accommodating the obesity um, a design requirement so as the US gets heavier makers of MRI machines and other medical scanners are rushing to cope by literally enlarging their equipment the Wall Street Journal recounts the story of a 630-pound Maryland mechanic who's been out of work because he can't get surgery for an injured back without an MRI. They say, of course, the best solution to this problem is to make sure that no one gets obese, says the radiologist, but as Americans, instead of going to the best solution, we just build a bigger machine. And that just means that uh, you're a consumer slave. And, uh, you know, America, I don't really think it stands for much, but um, corporations and exploitation of uh, individuals and that. So um, that's basically what it means. It helps uh, big companies like GE and that. Ohio inmate who weighs 480 pounds seeks ex execution delay, says he's too heavy for injection. So the Ohio inmate says he's too obese to be executed. This is my website, Global Government News, or ggnonline.com. Uh, there's a poll up there you can uh, vote on it about the anti-Muslim film. Uh, also, uh, if you'd like to donate, you can right here. So. And I'd like to thank you uh, for those who have donated to me uh, recently. Okay, so continuing with eugenics. China sees 900,000 newborns with birth defects annually. So they enforce a one-child policy. We already know that. They're obsessed with population numbers. And so they're on board with the eugenics movement. And actually, your tax dollars help um, support this, right? So it says here about five, and you don't see anything with the ACLU or Human Rights Watch or anything like that, all these Zionist organizations. You don't th see them actually say anything about that, do you? No, you don't. About 5.6% of newborns in China have birth defects with about almost a million affected infants born each year. So one of the reasons they say intake of prohibited medicine, I'm not sure if they're talking about farmers, big pharma drugs or if they're talking about um, the stuff that the Chinese have been taking for at least, what, a thousand years that's known to help them, medicinal stuff. Uh, increased exposure to radioactivity. I wonder where they're getting that from. Uh, birth defects are also a serious problem in China, particularly in rural areas. Hmm. Pesticides again? Because we know that pesticides lead to this. China investigates whether children used in GMO golden rice trial. So they're going to investigate allegations that the gen genetically modified food or rice was tested on Chinese children as part of a Sino-US research project. See? So there you go. Like that? You, you like to be a part of that eugenics operation? And the GMO is what is really causing, as far as these obesity things, thinking that people are uh, just, you know, eating so much, so much, so much, that the food is lacking minerals and nutrition, so they eat more of food that has less nutrition over the years, uh, so they get bigger. And then you have UC professor eyes permanent sterilant to call U.S. population. So it's a long article, and there's a video wrapped in, up in there, so check out the link in YouTube's video description. But I'll read this brief paragraph during a speech earlier this year given by University of California professor Richard Cardulo, a cotton seed derivative, uh, Gospiol, I, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Gossipol, is being proposed as an adequate sterilant to bring down the birth rate in the United States, stating that the substance permanent sterilization effects on males is already being considered for widespread use in, oh, China, there you go, and many third world countries. Cardulo calls it an option for use within the United States, kind of like Paul Ehrlich, right? Uh, Obama's uh, science advisor. In addition to this uh, substance, the professor advised the attending students to lower their standard of living if the earth is continue to carrying, uh, carrying humans on its surface. Something that many of us do know is what? Big Pharma pushes doctors to overprescribe drugs, says a study. Almost half of all Americans are currently diagnosed with a chronic condition and 40% of those older than 60 taking five or more medications. So it says, and it's likely that they are taking drugs they don't need because their doctors are too quick to fall under the influence of big pharma's aggressive drug sale reps. Well, the whole school of medicine comes and funded like education by the Rockefellers, and they are all into this um, big pharma stuff. So it's not that their influence is that they're taught to, to do that. Like, like I said, like a mechanic that reads off now um, these ASC certified. I know they, a lot of these guys know their stuff, but a lot of them they read now these doctors, they read off the computer screen and they just go through like a diagnostics of steps. So they don't equate things that could actually help you. And if it's not in there in the steps, well then, sorry, you're screwed. But that's why I refer to them as drug dealers because they're basically there to figure out which uh, pharma drug they're gonna give you. 
uh, more infants born addicted to prescription drugs. So it's no surprise, right? We're just saying big pharma pushes doctors to over prescribe, then more infants are born addicted to prescription drugs. So just one sign in a rising epidemic of infants born addicted to prescription drugs. Medication, so maybe we should get them on drugs to get them off prescription drugs, right? Medication effective in treating social withdrawal and fragile X and potentially autist, autistic patients. So a compound that targets core symptoms of fragile syndrome is effective for addressing the social withdrawal and challenging behaviors characteristic of the condition. So yeah, give them drugs so that they don't, um, so that they become social butterflies, right? But not too much social butterflies because then we're gonna give them uh, some ADHD pills, right? A bungling school worker tries to give child nine and other pupils ADHD medicine. So a mom has taken her nine-year-old son out of school after claiming a member of the staff wrongly offered him another pupil's prescription drugs after mistakenly handing medication to treat attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Luckily, the boy spotted that the ADHD medicine was not his and refused to take it. So she says, I don't feel my child is safe there at all. Well, it never really was, so. But for whatever it's worth, half of drugs prescribed in France are useless or dangerous as specialists. They claim that the state wastes money on unnecessary medicine that they blame for up to 20,000 deaths annually. So our European and US, uh, American, North American countries or governments, are they gonna do things like put uh, vitamins and minerals in the water, supplements? Are they gonna do what they do in South America where they give you stuff like Pau Darko, which helps fight cancer? And the government actually gives that out uh, to patients, stuff like that. No, they're not, because they don't make a lot of money off of it. And the pharma lobbying groups have way too much power over the governments. All right, now we're going to talk about uh, BPA and feminizing or the um, androgyny uh, agenda talk about feminizing uh, men and masculinizing um, women so and this is of course a control mechanism that's used by the powers that be um, plastic chemical BPA linked to childhood obesity so we probably will have to spin this all off into a second video but um, either way it says new research is reheating the debate on bisphenol A, a chemical banned from baby bottles that can still be found in other food and drink containers. So the BPA is linked to childhood obesity now. So uh, then we have BPA also affects the brain and nervous system. It says it's been determined to have neurological effects, including anxiety and or depression were the common symptoms. So besides uh, causing obesity and causing anxiety and depression, uh, the main chemical in most plastics is also what? May feminize boys' brains. So fem feminizing the brains of boys, a study published uh, has suggested this is back in 2009. So the uh, research into pregnant women has shown that those with higher concentrations of these uh, phthalates and the urine produced sons less likely to play with male toys such as trucks and games like play fighting. And a follow-up, why boys are turning into girls, Gender bending chemicals are largely exempt from EU regulations. So from 2009, but I'm just tying it in for what I'm going to be covering here, is uh, government yesterday unveiled official research showing that two-year-old children are at risk from a bewildering array of gender bending chemicals in such everyday items such as waterproof clothes, rubber boots, bed linen, food, nappies, uh, I guess that's napkins, I don't know, sunscreen, lotion, and moisturizing cream. So the picture is emerging of a ubiquitous chemical contamination driving down sperm counts and feminizing male children all over the developed world. Sperm counts are falling so fast that young men are less fertile than their fathers and produce only a third as much proportionally as hamsters and gender bending chemicals are also increasingly being blamed for the mystery of the lost boys, babies who should be normally be male who have been born as girls instead. So we'll finish up with this uh, article, maybe the next one, J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson settles a lawsuit on opening day of trial. So what are they talking about? Well, a lawsuit on the first day of a trial over his claims that an antipsychotic drug, uh, Risperdal, caused a male plaintiff to grow breast tissue, one of his lawyers told the judge in Philadelphia. So the lawsuit is one of 420 against Johnson & Johnson. About 130 of the suits involve claims that the drug caused young males to grow breasts. So, finish. so besides feminizing men, this happens to be the powers that be uh, deity. So... And hopefully you're not eating your uh, breakfast or your dinner right now. But either way, the re only reason these stories are out there when it comes to, like, uh, the man who swears by breast milk to fight uh, cancer, 
and also fighting cancer with daughter's breast milk is promoted by the mainstream media, it's because there's agenda here. This is GGN. Thank you.